What's up y'all? Welcome to Sense Engineering. This is Ananto. I'm a grad student and today I'll be taking over to explain how to draw a flowchart slash process flow diagram to perform material balance. Uh, if you are taking mass balance or material balance course, then you know how difficult it is to perform some material balances because they can be really intimidating. And the first thing you need to do to solve those problems is to draw a process flow diagram to simplify the problem to understand what you need to solve. So today I will explain uh, how I solve it and, and I hope you will find it really helpful and uh, you will be able to draw this process flow diagrams prior to solving your problems and it will help you to un understand uh, what the problem is asking to solve. With that being said, let's dive right in. So for today's problem, uh, I'll be going over the section 4.3a uh, from this book which is called Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes, third edition by Richard Felder. So now the first question is what is a flowchart or a process flow diagram? Uh, PFD in short card. What you see here is a box. Oh my god, every time I say the box, my bad guys, my bad. So in chemical engineering textbooks, we represent all of the processes using a box and it can be any processes, for example, distillation, combustion, condenser, and we use straight lines to represent our input and output. So that being said, why do we need to draw PFD or process flow diagrams, right? So if you read the text, it says PFD will help us to organize all the information because if you're solving those problems, those problems can be really intimidating and they ask you a lot. And sometimes the question is really not clear and you will have an understanding of what I'm talking about. So drawing this PFD will give you an idea what to solve for. It sounds really odd that the question itself is not asking what you have to figure out but this is what it is in mass in, in material balance so let's figure out let's find out so like in this video i'm going to show you how i do it how i uh, draw a uh, process flow diagram and how i define my own unknown variables and how i find out what to find out from the question and before i start solving the problem i highly recommend you that you do it with me so that you understand how i'm doing it and it will really benefit you so let's start uh, solving this example. So today I'm going to solve this example 4.31 from the book. This problem is really huge and it's asking a lot from you. And by a lot, I mean a lot. And if you're intimidated, you're not the only one. I'm intimidated and confused as well. Okay, so before solving it, my suggestion is that you can either read the problem, you can either read the whole problem and start drawing your flowchart or you can read line by line and take whatever information is in the line and start drawing it. So let's see what our first line says. The first line says three input streams are fed into an evaporation chamber to produce an output stream with the desired composition. So there's a lot going on in this line and they're describing the whole process to us. So which means that they're saying that we have a process which is evaporation chamber and we have three input streams and one output stream. So the first thing you would do, you would draw our, uh, the evaporation chamber, which is our process, like this. So first we would draw a box that shows our ev evaporation chamber, and then we would draw three input lines, like this. And, and the last thing we would draw is an output stream, which is going out of our uh, evaporation chamber. So now we have uh, a skeleton that kind of describes what's going on uh, within our process, which is our evaporation chamber. All right, so now let's look at, our, look at our streams. So the problem says we have three streams, right? And the first streams, this is the description of first streams. First stream, stream A. It says liquid water fed at a rate of 20 centimeter cubed per minute. So the first thing you do is that you choose which one of these, uh, which one of these streams would be your stream A. It can be any stream. I chose the the, um, the bottom most uh, stream uh, to be my stream A. And I wrote 20 centimeter cubed liquid water per minute. Let me pull up my laser pointer. All right. So 20 meter, uh, centimeter cubed per minute. And you're going to write the whole thing. You're going to label it. And as you can see, you are going to write 
the phase of the component, which is liquid. And it is pure liquid. It doesn't have anything else in it. And then if, uh, if you notice, this flow rate is a volumetric flow rate. And in chemical engineering, uh, it's not really a good idea to use volumetric flow rate because in every, like, almost every problem you encounter, everything else in your problem would be given in terms of molar flow rate or mass flow rate. So it's a, it's a good idea if you have a volumetric flow rate, you should convert it into a molar flow rate or mass flow rate. Since everything in this problem is given in terms of molar flow rate, I have converted this flow rate into molar flow rate, which is 1.1 mole water liquid per minute. And I have used this following conversion factor to convert my volume to flow rate to molar flow rate. And if you're, if you're confused about the conversion factor, this is the density of water and this is the molar weight of water. Now let's look at our stream B. Stream B says, stream B is air, which has 21 mole percent oxygen and balanced nitrogen, which means stream B has two components. It is air, but it has oxygen and nitrogen in it. So first thing, we're going to write what is given to us. We know the percentage of oxygen and percentage of nitrogen, and we're going to write this out. So, my, uh, so this is my B stream, and this is the molar fraction of oxygen which is 0.21 mole oxygen per mole and always keep an eye out on your uh, units so mole per mole which means your molar fraction and this is for oxygen and 0.79 mole nitrogen per mole all right now ask yourself is there anything we missed well there's a thing our stream b has oxygen and nitrogen in it and they have defined the mole fraction of oxygen and mole fraction of nitrogen so ask yourself what we are missing we are missing the molar flow rate of air itself we don't know the flow rate at which air is going into our evaporation chamber and this is important because we know the molar percentage of oxygen and nitrogen but we don't know how much oxygen or how much nitrogen we have in this stream. And if you want to know it, you have to know the molar flow rate of air. So this is an unknown. See, the question didn't tell you that you have to find the molar flow rate of air, the molar flow rate of the stream itself. But you have to understand that this is an information you need to know to solve this problem. So this is not given and we have to define our first unknown variable, which is molar flow rate of our air and i'm going to define the molar flow rate of our air by n1 dot mole air per minute so n1 is our first unknown variable which is the molar flow rate of air so now you must be asking yourself why some of the stuff i have written on top of the line and the other stuff i've written underneath the line well there is a tiny little convention in our chemical engineering society that whatever is on top of the line this represents the total amount or flow rate of the stream. So this represents the stream. And then whatever is underneath the line, this represents the amount or flow rate of each component, which means the fractions. So you're gonna write the fractions of the streams underneath the line. And then you're gonna write the whatever information you have about, uh, about, the, about the whole stream on top of the line. Now let's look at our third stream, stream C, which is going into our evaporation chamber. This is pure oxygen with a molar flow rate one fifth of the molar flow rate of stream B. We have defined the molar flow rate of stream B as n1 dot mole air per minute, which is an unknown. And for this stream, you have two, two options. You can either define a new unknown variable, it can be anything, or you can use this relationship, one fifth of the molar flow rate of stream B, which is this. So it's a good idea if you use this relationship because in the end, if you have a lot of unknown variables, then uh, you will have a lot of uh, equations to solve for it. So you can actually avoid unknown, uh, my bad, you can actually avoid unnecessary equations by applying this relationship. So it's always a good idea to cut down the number of uh, equations and to do that, we are not going to assign a new unknown for this stream. We're going to use this relationship, which is one fifth of the molar flow rate of stream B. So 
So that would give us 0.2 in one dot mole oxygen per minute. So see, like we use this relationship to avoid uh, introducing a new unknown. I could have used N2 or N3, uh, then I would have to write uh, N3 is equal to one fifth of N1, which is 0.2 of N1. So I just avoided using, uh, introducing a new unknown. And you should do that too. It's a smart move. It's, gonna, it's going to make your problem look uh, way more neat and clean. Let's look at our uh, next line. The next line describes the output of our whole system, our process, which says the output gas is analyzed and is found to contain 1.5 mole percent water. Well, if you read this line, this line may look small, but this contains a lot of information. See, the question did not tell you that it has other stuff in it too. But by reading it, by reading the whole line, you should realize that this output line, this output stream is a mixture of water, oxygen, and nitrogen. Because think about it, you are putting uh, an oxygen, nitrogen, water into your evaporation chamber and only water is getting out, it doesn't make any sense, right? So they are going out as a mixture. So first I'm going to write down whatever was given uh, given to us, which is 1.5 mole percent of water, the mole fraction of water. And there you go, we have mole fraction of water. And now we know that this stream also contains oxygen and nitrogen. So I'm going to assign a variable for our uh, oxygen mole fraction, which is Y. And then the rest will be nitrogen. So here, I want to uh, point out that you could have used another unknown variable for nitrogen. For example, Z or any other letter. It doesn't matter. But we know that the sum of all fractions should equal to one. And I use that relationship to avoid introducing another variable. So you should do that. So you should uh, do these little calculations as you are drawing your uh, process flow diagram and it would make your uh, process uh, look really clean as I've said earlier and it would really help you to cut down the number of equations. All right, so now we know that uh, we have three components in the stream and we know the mole fractions of the stream, right? What else do we need to know? We need to know the, mole fro the molar flow rate of the stream itself, right? Because it wasn't given to us. So is, there a so is there any relationship with the molar flow rate of our output stream and any uh, one of our input streams? No. So if there is no relationship, we're going to assign a new variable for our output molar flow rate, which is N2 mole air per minute. So now let's look at our last line. So our last line says draw and label a flow chart of the process and calculate all unknown stream variables. We have everything labeled and we know uh, how many unknown variables we have, which is N1, N2, and Y. So we have three unknown variables. We could have had more if you had chosen to use a new unknown variable for this stream and a new unknown variable for this mole fractions, we would have had uh, five unknown variables, but then again, you would have introduced more equations to solve for those unknown variables. But we were smart. We avoided introducing those uh, variables. So we avoided using un uh, unnecessary equations. And if you look at this flowchart, if you look at this uh, PFD, you have a complete picture of what's going on with your processes and you have a complete idea how many unknowns you have to solve for. So all the, all the information of the line they represent the molar flow rate of the whole stream and all the information below the line they represent the mole fractions of the stream. So from here on, you can actually do the overall mass balance and also you can do individual uh, component mass balance to figure out your unknowns and finally check whether you are right or wrong. That's why I wanted to show you how I draw a, a process flow diagram because this is extremely important. Well, with that being said, I hope you really enjoyed my video and I hope I was able to explain how to draw a process flow diagram and you were able to learn as well so that you can use this technique to draw a process flow diagram in the future and solve your problems. And if you have any questions, please comment down below. And if you like this video, smash that like button 
And also, if you have any recommendations, please let us know and stay safe.